without further ado, uh, I've been on, I'm honored to introduce Dr. Brad Wham, uh, professor at the University of Colorado in Boulder, who have, will be hopefully answering all of your seismic questions pertaining to this. Dr. Wham? Sure, thanks. Uh, can you guys hear me all right? Great, I uh, appreciate the opportunity to uh, talk a little bit about some of the, the seismic testing we've done. Uh, I just wanted to mention, we uh, are thinking about uh, our Haitian friends uh, after this weekend's earthquake. We heard that there was a lot of serious damage to uh, building structures and underground infrastructure. And so a lot of the work we've been doing is trying to think about those types of situations, whether while they may be low, probability, uh, we want to be prepared and we'll be able to continue to provide water. So um, there's a lot of activity that's been happening over the 10 years, over the last about 10 years or so that uh, Marcus and uh, Gilbert uh, alluded to. Uh, we're working on seismic design standards for water and water pipelines. We're working on testing standards. We're working on getting some of these systems uh, tested and qualified uh, for various levels of ground deformation. And so to start off, uh, I wanted to give, this is a, a preliminary table of how we're starting to think, you know, how we're thinking about uh, qualifying different types of products for a seismic response. Uh, so if you click, Marcus, um, we can first think about axial strain. Uh, and so the picture on the right shows an example of a landslide or a lateral spread or something that would impose uh, tension uh, on, the, on a pipeline at the top of the scarp uh, and compression down at the bottom. Um, and so we're looking at ways of characterizing the level of strain uh, that a system can handle. Um, and that uh, coming out of that is, uh, is, is the deformation and the loads that it needs to be able to handle to, to, to work with different levels of ground movement. Uh, the, the bottom half of the, 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 uh, the chart looks at uh, lateral loading. So if you imagine a pipeline crossing a, um, a, displace, uh, a ground displacement, uh, about a 90 degree angle to the um, relative movement. A fault rupture would be similar to this, uh, depending on its orientation. We're thinking about how the pipe is in bending and uh, looking at continuous pipe systems and segmented pipe systems and how we would quantify the level of deformation that those systems need to be able to handle. Uh, and so uh, we're gonna talk a little bit first about uh, the lateral loading uh, on some of the PVCO pipe. Um, we're, uh, we're kind of going back and forth. Um, you can see, we're thinking for jointed pipe, we're thinking about the a level of deflection that happens at each joint or rotation uh, per length of a pipe. Uh, and then for continuous style pipe, we're thinking about radius of curvature. And so classifying those through a systematic measuring system is one of the things we're working on developing. Uh, if you go to the next one, Marcus, thanks. Um, so here at CU Boulder, uh, the Center for Infrastructure, Energy and Space Testing, we have uh, a number of different pieces of equipment to apply large loads to different types of structures. Uh, one is our million pound uh, uniaxial testing machine, uh, which can apply very large load and vertical displacements uh, to a pipe in four point bending. And so on the right here is an example of what uh, of the test that we're going to we're going to show you here in a second. If you click um, the intention of this test is a four point bending setup so that we have a constant moment region at the center of the pipe looking at the coupling. Um, or the connection uh, where we think is, is probably the most vulnerable, right? Uh, Marcus showed some pretty incredible uh, videos of, of what the pipe can do without joints, but we wanna build a seismic system that where each of the connections uh, along the length, whether it's pipe to pipe or pipe to valve or pipe to uh, T, each of those individual connections has an adequate strength to be able to handle uh, various types of earthquake loading. And so uh, we're looking at this coupling at the center um, we use uh, various types of roller bearings to be able to apply relatively uh, vertical, uh, 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 lateral loading, vertical uh, loading to the pipe uh, to have that constant moment region. We have a number, many, many uh, 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 um, instrumentation that we use, uh, including recording loads, uh, many uh, displacements along the pipe, uh, localized strain gauge measurements, and everything is that we do is done under uh, internal uh, pressure so we can identify leaks um, and different uh, serviceability and ultimate limit states. Uh, so if you go to the next one, Marcus. Um, so as, as part of this uh, testing program, this is um, a video showing the lateral loading test in our million pound frame that uh, Marcus and Gilbert were, were here for. We usually don't have Jam Eagle banners up for every test, but uh, for this one we did. <laughs> uh, but uh, we're going to apply uh, a load here uh, through dropping uh, our crosshead. 
um, and uh, continue to apply load until we get to a serviceability limit state and an ultimate limit state. And so we're thinking serviceability limit state for this test occurs um, right about here, uh, or maybe a little bit further, uh, when we get the first leak, when we get a first leakage at the joint, right? We don't want our pipes to leak, obviously. Uh, and so we would consider a uh, leakage on, on the order of uh, um, a drop per second uh, to be, uh, so there, there's, there's the leakage. Uh, so that's sort of a serviceability state. We don't want the pipes to leak, um, but during an earthquake, if we did have several joints leak, uh, but they continue to sustain pressure, that would be good. We'd be able to provide water to our hospitals and other uh, critical facilities. So uh, this pipe continued to deform uh, significantly after uh, first leakage um, until a point where it uh, started to lose pressure more significantly and then continue to deform further uh, as we get to what uh, I would consider probably this level of leakage would be an ultimate limit state uh, where we have a lot of water coming out, um, but we then take it through the full uh, structural response uh, where we get uh, dislocation of the pipe out of the joint. This is a, an RCT fitting, um, which uh, and uh, see a piece uh, uh, pressure class 235 um, PVCO pipe uh, that we tested. Um, and so Essentially, this is excellent performance. Uh, it's it's far, far beyond the radius of curvature of the highest level that currently exists. Um, and we have a little bit of fun with our testing that we take things all the way through failure so that uh, we know sort of what the upper bound performance is on something like this. Um, we, like I mentioned, we have a, a lot of different um, instrumentation. I've got a couple of examples of some of the plots and things. Um, for for the, the more technical folks in the audience, the top uh, left plot is looking at the crosshead displacement. We applied uh, something in the order of 28 inches of crosshead displacement to this thing. Um, we pressurized this test at approximately 15 PSI. We'll use different uh, pressures for different tests, uh, sometimes at uh, 65 PSI, which is, is pretty close to typical operating pressure, sometimes higher, sometimes lower, particularly for bending tests. Uh, we have found that lower pressures may be a worst case scenario. So that's why we did it at 15 PSI. We could also um, look, at the, look at the leakage that occurs. Um, the uh, strains is the middle plot there. Uh, beautiful symmetric uh, axial and circumferential strain gauges. So we understand what the pipe is having to do uh, in order to accomplish these uh, deformations. Uh, and then also the, com the contribution of the joint. There's, there's rotation at the joint and there's, uh, there's strain in the pipe that are both contributing uh, to the level of deformation that the system is able to handle. Um, and then the final one is a plot I was working on this morning on curvature. Uh, and so curvature, uh, radius of curvature is the inverse of curvature. Um, and uh, that, that's showing that we're, we're at curvatures and a couple of different calculation methods uh, approaching 0 0.01. Uh, the highest seismic standard is 0 0.005. So we're up about... Uh, uh, about five times greater uh, right now. And we're still working through some of the results, but I think the video uh, speaks for itself that uh, it, did, uh, uh, it was able to do pretty well. This is one of three lateral uh, bending tests we've done um, thus far on a couple of, of, of different uh, scenarios, trying to um, kind of suss out what the worst case uh, performance is and use that as sort of the benchmark for uh, the size and performance of the system. Um, all of those tests have looked pretty well so far. Uh, do the next slide. Um, and so as an example of some of the data that we pull out, <clears throat> this is a, a drawing of what the, the pipe sort of looks like. Under deformation, we have many um, vertical measuring devices. And so if you click one more time, um, what we're essentially doing is defining a radius of curvature um, that the pipe has to uh, be able to wrap around. So if we were to draw a circle, uh, we're using these measurements to calculate that radius of curvature. It's a little trickier uh, for systems like PVCO, which has a very flexible um, uh, bar pipe barrel and also has uh, joints uh, couplings like the RCT, which uh, allows something in the order of five degrees of deflection at each of each side of the coupling uh, already. So we want to look at these look at the these results and consider these positive attributes in, in any system. Uh, and for this case, uh, uh, we're looking at the PVCO. Next, uh, next slide. Um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about uh, an axial compression test we did, uh, bringing up on the right 
hand side, uh, kind of this theoretical uh, ground movement, lateral spread, landslide, uh, where we would get a compression down at the bottom and we'd see uh, some type of overbelling uh, potentially of the spigot and, um, and of the, uh, in the bell. Uh, the, the SolidWorks drawing there is of our, of our test frame, which you can test up to 12 inch diameter, uh, probably larger pipes with a 100,000 pound actuator, which is, is usually uh, sufficient to break most things uh, for this test setup. To go to the next one. Uh, so this is an example of one of the uh, the actual compression tests we've done, um, uh, looking at a uh, pressure class two thirty five PVCO pipe with an external restraint. Um, I think this one was uh, I think this is an EBA C nineteen hundred, uh, but uh, looking at how uh, that response is when you get. Uh, when you have the spigot pushing into the bell. Uh, this test was ran in sort of two steps. Uh, one, we, we pushed it into a pretty significant level of deformation, had no leaks or no damage. Uh, and so we tried to push it again and see if we could get it to break. And we were actually unable to fail this uh, particular pipe uh, in terms of getting leakage or, or inability to uh, hold pressure. Uh, we continued to hold 65 PSI pressure uh, throughout the test. Uh, after this, this is a close-up view. After the first push, uh, we typically do pressure. Uh, uh, we, we, we pressurize and depressurize it several times to kind of simulate how it might, uh, the conditions after a ground uh, deformation event. Um, during these tests, you can see some of the instrumentation on there. We've got um, string pots uh, and LVDTs that are measuring the localized deformation at the joint to try to get an idea of how far the spigot is protruding into the bell. In this test, it was about two inches of displacement of the spigot into the back of the bell and in and underneath actually um, the uh, the external restraint there. Um, the PVCO material is really quite interesting. It will, the spigot itself will uh, circumferentially buckle and move into uh, smaller spaces uh, while continuing to uh, preserve the pressure barrier. The, the gasket is not affected and it continues to hold pressure, um, which is from my uh, point of view, extremely good uh, performance uh, under um, compressive deformation. Um, as an example, uh, we uh, the, the the plot all the way to the right is looking at three different um, compression tests. Um, uh, just to, to talk a little bit about it, we have axial force along the y-axis and um, joint displacement along the x-axis. Um, we've did tests with the RCT and the C1900 restraint um, on the order of 25,000, 28,000 pounds of compressive force these uh, pipes were able to handle. Uh, and honestly, it's been the limitation of our test frame and keeping everything relatively straight. Uh, we've been, uh, we've had a tough time failing most of these things uh, unless we get to significant levels of deformation. In fact, the only one that we were able to get a leak out of is this blue one here, um, which is a PC25. We made some modifications to our frame and we said, we're gonna break one of these in compression. And we finally got a leak out of one of the joints after something on the order of eight inches of, uh, of joint displacement, uh, which was pretty impressive. Um, it was pretty impressive performance. Um, so we go to the next slide. Um, So I just want to point out, uh, we have a great team at CU Boulder. Uh, we have many students and staff that did all this work. I can't take full credit for it. I think some of them might be listening. And so I uh, want to thank them and uh, JM Eagle for giving us the opportunity to do some of this research that is helping uh, support uh, you know, the way that we're developing these test standards so that uh, people across the country, around the world can perform tests uh, in their own facilities or have someone else do it uh, and, tr and get uh, various products and connections qualified uh, for, for seismic response so that the, our utility friends uh, know that they're putting in uh, good, good uh, quality uh, systems in the places where they need to. That's all from me, thanks.